Harley Quinn strikes a pose. Here's your look at the new DC collectibles. DC cover girls. Harley Quinn, Joelle Jones statue. Eisner Award nominated artist Joelle Jones brings her unique style to the DC Cover Girls line with this premium 9 inch poly resin Harley Quinn sculpted by Jack Matthews. Limited to 5,000 pieces, this highly detailed version of Harley Quinn perfectly displays Jones's uncanny ability to capture energy and expression, complete with an oversized pop gun. Inspired by the powerful women of the DC Universe, DC Cover Girls is a long running line that features dynamic depictions of the most famous superheroines and super villains as premium 9-inch statues. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna figure out how tall Harley Quinn stands. And whilst I do that, I just wanna let you guys know FYI that I picked this one up over at alteregocomics.com. I'm pretty sure this one's still currently in stock, so if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, head on over to alteregocomics.com. I'll put the link down below. According to the tape measure, you're looking at a statue that's standing 11 and a half inches, 11 and a half inches exactly. I did actually have to include also a display stand because the statue isn't going to stand on its own unless it stands on its own with its own stand. I, just, I think that's about right. Uh, but you do need the display stand. I'll show you how kind of everything comes together in a second. 11 and a half uh, inches, including the stand, is the Harley Quinn statue. Late members of the mob who happen to come in late, I did see you, you kind of shuffled in and kind of looked around to see if anybody was looking at you. I was looking at you during this meeting. You guys are late, sit down. Somebody though, as they're sitting down says, what about centimeters? Okay, well I will answer your question even though you are late. 29 and about 29 and a half centimeters tall is the Harley Quinn statue here. To get this one assembled, there's very little assembly that's required. But before we do that, I wanna show you guys the display stand that comes included with the statue. I am a little disappointed. I'm disappointed that it's got as much scuffs and little imperfections to it. I really wasn't expecting it to come out of display, uh, out of the box for display looking like this. You got the Joel logo kind of engraved into this circular ring and then an inner circular uh, crimson colored ring featuring the signature down below. Peg holes will support the supplied pegs on the figure's feet and we'll get that in place. And then on the other side, you're looking at out of uh, production value release of 5,000 copies. This one so happens to be 2303, 2,303. And then you've also got some felt feet around it. A little bit of styrofoam still left remaining from the feet. It just didn't want to let go when I got this out of the packaging. Yeah, I have to admit, I am a little on the disappointed side that it does have these little scuffs. 
I could probably take uh, maybe a little bit of paint or something like that, but at the very least, I don't really know why it has as much imperfections to it. It looks like it's been just really badly damaged. Probably came from DC collectibles like that. Um, I'll probably have to reach out to Alter Ego Comics and just like FYI, let them know. So it's a little disappointing that that be the case for the display stand. Slight disappointments aside, we're going to go ahead and take the statue's feet, which happens to be a small peg, followed by the bigger brother at the back there, the larger peg, and then that's going to plug into place. You're going to plug it so it's the feet are facing towards the signature. That's the only way that it will attach. The other way around will, won't simply fit, so you just won't be able to do that. And then you've got yourself the finished statue in hand. Let's have a look at some of the details. Now, admittingly, when I first saw images of this one online, I wasn't so super crazy about it. I think what was the deal breaker for me, at least at that time, was the way that the head was sculpted. You can see that they've got the pom-poms, or the sides of her mask, kind of just draping off to the side. Like, the cow looks good, but I really wasn't thrilled by the fact that it jet out the way that it did. I'm so used to more so Harley Quinn having, you know, the task, these pom-poms is draping down to the side. So it's a little, like I said, initially looking at it online, wasn't super crazy about it, but I took the chance because I knew I was a big fan of Harley Quinn physically getting it in hand and spending some much needed deserving time with it. I have to say, honestly, I have warmed up to this look. I didn't like it initially, but I think I like it now. Now, I don't know if she has thrown her head back, whoo, causing the pom-poms to kind of drape back, or a good gush of wind has come and just kind of blown these back. I don't know, whatever the story may be, uh, that something has caused these to blow back. They obviously don't have their own frame inside here that would defeat the purpose completely. But again, I do like it a lot more than I liked it before. And even more so, the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm actually digging the fact that it does look different than what we normally would see with a Harley Quinn. For her face sculpt, it's pretty much traditional Harley Quinn. There's not really much that's been changed at all to it. She's got big, bright crystal blue eyes. I like that she does have an open mouth, visible tongue, visibly seen right there. And she's got bright red ruby lips. A little bit of softer pink gets brushed to the cheeks, kind of just adding a little extra umph. But one thing I do like about it is the pink is subtle. There's not enough of it where it's detracting from the face. Sometimes we've seen Harley Quinn statues in the past where they feel so excessively the need to add extra kind of paint to this white. Don't, don't add all this extra stuff. It really breaks up from the statue's face sculpt. And luckily for Harley Quinn, she doesn't have that. So I'm glad to report that as to anybody of the visible viewing audience could probably see that for themselves. Of course, this is traditional Harley Quinn, so with traditional Harley Quinn comes the alternating patchwork of black versus the red. The black has a nice sheen to it, almost seeming as if something that she could have sewn herself, maybe from like a pleather or raincoat, very similar to maybe like uh, Michelle Pfeiffer from the Batman Returns film. I do like, again, love that sheen. She's got the little uh, Harley Quinn diamonds present there on her arms, present there on her torso. Uh, alternate again the, the black diamonds to the red diamonds there on the other side. Uh, a few of the diamonds also there on her leg. Uh, one specific thing, taking some cues from the packaging, is that uh, Joelle really does have a sense of kind of... Uh, flow, a gesture, kind of a, an, an instant pose that makes the, the figure, or in this case, the statue look a little bit more playful. And uh, Harley Quinn definitely is no exception to that. I mean, her pose, very much playful. She's got one leg kind of balancing, doing the balancing act for everything else, the one bent knee. And then again, she's kind of just playfully posing for perhaps Mr. J that's off in the background here kind of watching her. The one weapon of choice, of course, is her weapon of choice. Is she's got the little cap gun. Now, the cap gun, if you are interested to use this, you can put the, the, the actual cork into the cap. You can fill that out right nicely. Um, I don't know if I like the fact that the cording is wrapped around the handle. That's of only my own personal preference. I think actually the cording should have been attached right here. It's just normally where I think of when I think of the cord that attaches always to these corks. I feel like it should have been like right here and maybe not necessarily right there because it just seems awkward 
that she would be firing that off and it's so close to her trigger finger. Just again, that's only my own personal preference. Uh, now the cork is attached via a little ringlet there on the end. From what I can feel, it feels like it's a real cork. The cork and the cording represent the only other things that are on here that aren't of the regular statue's material. So I like the fact that they're kind of adding some extra mediums to it. Uh, there's nothing on the interior, but at least it's hollow enough, like I said, that if you wanted to, you could add the cork in there. I just didn't do it for the opener montage for the uh, the actual review, but just want to show you that you, got, you guys can actually put that in there if you want. It's, I don't know, I'm not really sure which route I would personally go. I kind of like the fact that it looks like she's just fired it off. But again, there's the option if you want that you you know you can cork the cap, if you will, and then display the statue like that if you really wanted to. Paint on the figure for the most part, and I say only for the most part because the statue, unfortunately, the base bottom took some some bruising and some beatings, unfortunately. Well, well the rest of the statue actually remains quite unscathed, rather clean, in fact. The bright ruffles on the sleeves as well as the collared piece are as just as bright as her face. Of course, maybe omitting some of that pink that we had discussed before. I like, again, that they don't add any unnecessary colors. Harley Quinn, by nature, should be black, should be red, and should be white. Anything adding extra to that, sometimes companies also feel the need to maybe yellow her teeth. Here, they've just kind of kept to the simples, the simple palettes of the red, the black, and the white, like we've already discussed. And I think that works so well for this particular statue. Funny enough, though, it's really an interesting piece because initially, like I said, I really wasn't thrilled for the design of this statue. The longer I now have it in my collection, the more I'm warming up to the real neat look for Harley Quinn. I, I think I might actually, when it comes to displaying her, not have her straight on. In fact, probably what you're seeing right now, literally snapping the shot right there in my mind. That's probably going to be the exact angle that I want to face her from. Entirely my own personal preference, but the fact that her eye, her vision is kind of looking off to the side, the way that she's slightly turned with her posture, I feel like this is kind of the best route, the best way to be looking at the statue, and that's the way I'm going to be displaying her on my shelf. Joelle Jones has always been known for bringing a unique style to the DC cover girls that she draws. In fact, actually, if you aren't familiar with her work, uh, hopefully reviews like this will open the door to kind of immersing yourself with some of the artwork that DC Collectibles makes statues from. Do yourself a uh, solid though, and maybe after this video is done, Google search Joelle Jones. You'll see exactly what I mean. She really captures a flow and energy to her. She very much when you look at it, you know it's her artwork maybe versus another artist. What's so uncanny though is the fact that DC Collectibles is able to capture not only Joelle Jones's artwork, but many of the artists that they work with and be able to verbatimly put that into a polyresin statue. This looks like the artwork that's depicted on the back of the box. Admittingly, I will say though, when I first saw images of this statue, I really didn't warm up to it right away. I didn't like the fact that the pom-poms stood straight up. Whatever gesture or action she was currently in causing those pom-poms to be thrown back, I just really didn't like the design. The more though, now that I've picked it up and spent some much needed time with it, the more that I look at it, the more I'm really loving this statue. It sort of has captured me and feel, I feel so compelled to want to just sit here and look at it. I will say though, when you do or if you manage to pick up the statue for yourself, uh, I personally would not display her straight on. I think that's why it looks so jarring at first. In fact, actually, if you turn her on an angle where her torso is slightly bent and her head is kind of looking towards you, I, I think that's the perfect pose for displaying this statue. As I said, if you guys are looking to pick this one up for yourself, it's of a limited quantity, 5,000 copies, which is on average about the same quantity value that most of the statues get released under. Now that may seem high if you guys think about it, but not really. I firsthand have had experiences like this happen where I've wanted to get statues after the fact. Comic book stores and online stores just didn't have it anymore, so I had to source it out on places like eBay. And of course, with eBay, I had to pay the 
ludicrous prices that some of the sellers would be charging for these pieces after the fact. So do yourself a favor if you guys are interested in this piece for yourself or maybe like Joel Jones's work or maybe even after this review you have been sold on the idea of picking up the statue for yourself. Uh, pick it up right away and you can head over to alteregocomics.com. They have it currently in stock. And uh, like I said, for Alter Ego Comics, it's usually my go-to for online store purchases. Uh, they offer some of the best customer service. Every time I've had a purchase with Alter Ego Comics, I've never had any issues whatsoever. I don't know if I'll actually reach out to them regarding the base because, again, that's the one disappointment about the statue. While I have warmed up to the idea of the look of Harley Quinn, it is disappointing that the statue came out as as damaged as it was and I know it's not obviously alter ego alter ego comics's fault it's just the way it was designed and and developed and manufactured at the DC collectibles factory so a bit of a shame that the statue is damaged or at least the paint is a little scuffed up I'm gonna see if I can get that one fixed but if you guys are interested in getting anything from alter ego comics like I said it's one of the best online stores Regularly, I pick up a lot of my hot toys from Alter Ego Comics because they're one of the only few online companies that ship double boxes. Maybe not in the case of necessarily a statue, but in a case certainly of uh, hot toys. If you guys are looking to pick up hot toys for yourself, they come inside the mailer box, of course, but Alter Ego Comics also double boxes it. So in other words, what that means is they put it inside of a larger shipping box, and it comes right to your door and it's shipped right to your door maybe without those sound effects they like I said offer up some of the best customer service of the various experiences that I've had with online stores they're one of the best and uh, like I said if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself the folks over at Alter Ego Comics also want to help you guys with a coupon code of SPOT15 SPOT15 can save you guys 15% or $15 off uh, your purchase of $150 or more. So, for example, if you're looking to pick up Harley Quinn for yourself, she is, I believe, less than $150. However, if you want to pick up a couple of things, use the coupon code SPOT15, save yourselves 15 smackaroos right off your total purchase. You can't beat that. So, like I said, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, 5,000 pieces sounds high. It can sell out pretty fast. Head over to alteregocomics.com today and order your Harley Quinn from Joel Jones. Today we were having a look though at the DC Collectibles DC Cover Girls Harley Quinn designed by Joel Jones. A really neat looking statue. Didn't like it at first. Love it after I've spent some much needed time with it. If you guys also want to go back and have a look at some of my other DC collectible statue reviews, there's a playlist for that. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button that's located at the bottom right hand corner of the screen and also in the video description you'll find various different social media outlets that you can follow this fellow reviewer after the video is done. If you guys want to see what I'm doing behind the scenes, whatever movies I'm watching or whatever I'm doing when I'm not doing this, you can check in the video description just below this video. As always guys, thanks for watching as you always do. If you picked up the statue for yourself, let me know down below what you guys think of the statue or just based on this review and this review alone, what do you guys think of the Joelle Jones statue of Harley Quinn? Let me know down below in the comments section. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys next time.